Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe Dinshal Miniak and turn on the bell icon to get notified on each upcoming video. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares and you can join me on Facebook and Instagram through the links given at the description box. In today's video, we will study the composition, function, the different types and location of each type of cementum and lastly the process of cementum formation or the cementogenesis. So without wasting time, let's begin. Cementum is an avascular and non innervated mineralized connective tissue. Cementum surrounds the roots of teeth beginning at the cemento enamel junction or the CEJ and continues up to the apex of the tooth. Cementum at the crown surface is termed the coronal cementum and that at the root surface is called radicular cementum. The thickness of cementum varies in different teeth and the same teeth in different regions. It is thinnest at the cemento enamel junction that is 20 to 50 micrometers and thickest towards the apex which is about 150 to 200 micrometer. Cementum is light yellow and comparatively less mineralized to dentine. Although it's yellow in color but in this video in order to outstand it I'll be drawing it in green. The main functions of cementum are anchorage, adaptation and repair. Anchorage is considered the primary function of cementum. It serves as a medium for the attachment of PDL fibers, hence bending the tooth to the alveolar bone. It helps in the adaptation of the tooth to occlusal wear by deposition of cementum at the apex of the root. And it serves as a major reparative tissue in cases of root fractures or root resorptions. Looking at the composition of cementum, about 45 to 50 percent of cementum is made up of inorganic material, and about 50 to 55 percent of it is made up of organic material and water. The organic part of it consists of collagenous and non-collagenous proteins. The collagenous proteins are mainly of type 1 collagen and protein polysaccharides. Other types of collagenous proteins present are type 3, 5 and 6 and finally collagen type 12. The non-collagenous proteins are present in a wide variety and it fills the spaces in between the collagenous proteins. Some other listed non-collagenous proteins are alkaline phosphatase, dentine cyaloprotein, fibronectin, osteopontin, osteonectin and cementum adhesion proteins and also some other types of proteins. The inorganic part of cementum consists mainly of hydroxyapatite crystals in the form of calcium and phosphate. It has got the highest fluoride content of all mineralized tissues of the body. Sounds interesting. Since we have got different types of cementum which we will study later, all these types will however differ from each other in their location, structure, function, rate of formation, biomechanical composition and finally the degree of mineralization. Let's now move on to the process of cementum formation or the cementogenesis and the different types of cementum and their location alongside. Before moving on, please do consider subscribing to the channel and turning on the bell icon so that each time a video is uploaded, you get a notification. The formation of cementum begins after the tooth crown is completely formed and while the root formation is beginning. To understand this, let's recap the cells of a tooth germ. As we know that a tooth germ is mainly composed of three parts. These three parts are the enamel organ, the dental papilla and the dental follicle or the dental sac. The enamel organ of this tooth germ will form the enamel of the tooth. The cells of the dental papilla are involved in the formation of the dentine along with the dental pulp and surrounding this dental papilla and enamel organ is the dental sac or the dental follicle which will finally give rise to the periodontium of a tooth and the cementum being a part of the periodontium. So, after the crown of a tooth is formed up to the future cemento enamel junction or the CEJ, the enamel organ regresses and turns into a reduced enamel epithelium. Here in this diagram, the reduced enamel epithelium is shown in black, enamel in blue and dentine in yellow color. The reduced enamel epithelium is composed of cells of the inner and outer enamel epithelium. 
These cells of inner and outer enamel epithelium as a unit extends downwards to form the Hertwig epithelial root sheet or HERS. And this root sheet will be responsible for the formation of the root of a chuck and eventually will then stimulate the formation of cementum. Let's see how. To understand this, let's have a close-up view of this root sheet and look at how the root formation begins and how then the cementum is formed accordingly. As the root sheet begins to grow downwards, it differentiates the nearby cells of the dental papilla into pre-odontoblasts. The cells of the dental follicle at this stage are undifferentiated and the root sheet is intact. As soon as the pre-odontoblasts turns into the mature odontoblasts, they will lay down the dentinal matrix for the part of the root. The dental matrix will cause the perforation of the Hertwig's epithelial root sheet in its nearby sites and the barrier between the cells of the dental follicle and the dentinal matrix will be removed. This barrier removal between the newly formed dentinal matrix and the cells of the dental follicle will create a direct contact between the cells of the two sites. The connection of the newly formed dentinal matrix with the dental follicle will cause differentiation of some cells of the dental follicle into cementoblasts and they will lay down the cemental matrix. Some of the cells will be differentiated into fibroblasts which will then form the pedial fibers and some of the cells will be differentiated into osteoblasts which will form the alveolar bone. Some cells of the Hertwig epithelial root sheet will persist in the pedial space and are given the name cell rests of molasses. The epithelial cell rests of molasses has the potential to differentiate into any type of cell or they may remain as cell rests of molasses in the pedial and later on become the source of odontogenic cysts. Amongst all these cells reviewed, our focus of concern is cementoblasts. So let's just talk about them. The cementoblasts, after its differentiation, will start laying down the organic matrix of the cementum or the cementoid along the root surface. The organic matrix or the cementoid will be mostly the collagen fibers. The collagen fibers produced at this initial stage will form a fibrous fringe that will intermingle with the periodontal ligament fibers from the differentiated fibroblasts. Once the pedial fibers get attached to the fibrous fringe from the cementum, the cementum is classified as acellular extrinsic fiber cementum. The cementum is referred to as extrinsic fibers because the cementum is incorporated with the pedial fibers which are essentially not from the cementum itself. The embedded ends of the pedial fibers into the cementum are called sharpest fibers. Each sharpest fiber is composed of numerous collagen fibrils that pass well into the cementum and intermingles with the fibers of the cementum. The collagen fibers in acellular cementum are arranged perpendicular or at right angle to the tooth surface. It's called acellular because there are no cementoblasts within the cementoid. The cells are however arranged at the outer surface. As this acellular extrinsic fiber cementum is formed initially, it's also called the primary cementum. The acellular extrinsic fiber cementum is the only type of cementum in single rooted teeth which surrounds the single root from the cervical margin up to the root apex. In multi rooted teeth, it surrounds the roots from the cervical margin up to the apical third. The main function of acellular extrinsic fiber cementum is strong anchorage of the tooth within its bony socket. After the formation of acellular extrinsic fiber cementum, a much less mineralized cementum is formed at the apical third called the cellular cementum. The cementoblast secretes the ground substance of the cementoid to form its intrinsic fibers. The deposition of the organic matrix of this next formed cementum occurs at a much faster rate which results in deposition of organic matrix even around the cementoblasts themselves, causing entrapment of cementoblasts within their own produced chambers or spaces called lacunae. The cementoblasts remain and persist within their own form cavities in the form of cementocytes. That's why this type of cementum is given the name cellular cementum.
This cellular cementum is not associated with extrinsic fibers of the PDL. It's however associated with its own intrinsic fibers, hence given the name cellular intrinsic fiber cementum. Although the ends of the PDL fibers or the sharpest fibers do enter to some distance within the cellular cementum, but it does not intermingle with the fibers of the cementum. And unlike the sharpest fibers in acellular cementum, these fibers are placed far apart in cellular cementum as shown here. The collagen fibers in the cellular intrinsic fiber cementum are parallel to the tooth surface. As the cellular intrinsic fiber cementum is formed after the acellular extrinsic fiber cementum, it's also called the secondary cementum. This type of cementum is present in middle to apical third and furcation areas of multi-rooted teeth, and it's mainly involved in adaptation and repair of the cementum. The secondary cementum is formed as soon as the teeth comes into occlusion until its exfoliation. The reason why the extrinsic fibers of the PDL are not well embedded within the cellular cementum is that the fibroblast shows a close relationship with cementoblasts during acellular cementum formation, but not during the cellular cementum formation, suggesting that it has a role to play in acellular cementum. At the apical and furcation areas, the cellular intrinsic fiber cementum joins or alternates with acellular extrinsic fiber cementum and forms the mixed stratified cementum. This type has both the cellular and acellular cementum and as said before, is present at the apical third and furcation areas of multi-rooted teeth. One another type of cementum, known so far and present at the cervical margin of the tooth, is the acellular afibrillar cementum, which, as the name suggests, has got no cells and no intrinsic or extrinsic fibers. The acellular and afibrillar cementum is formed when there is a premature loss of the reduced enamel epithelium from the tooth crown, as a result of which the connective tissue cells comes in contact with the enamel at the cervical area of the tooth and eventually cementum starts depositing a thin layer on the enamel at the cervical margin of the root which is devoid of cells and fibers. That's why given the name acellular and afibrillar cementum which means no cells and no fibers at all. I hope you all liked this video. If you think this video was really helpful, please do subscribe the channel and share the video with friends. And please let me know about your thoughts on this video in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.